In a 2014 interview, actress Kate Hudson told Alan Carr that she once saw a ghost of a woman with no face, and that she and her mom Goldie Horn can see dead people. She said, it is not really seeing, it is feeling a spirit. She explained, I believe in energy. I believe our brains can manifest into visual things. Sting told Jimmy Fallon in an interview that he never believed in ghosts and was very skeptical about them until I lived with them. He claims that his London home was haunted by a female ghost and the spirit of a child. Every morning he'd find that things had been reorganized in the kitchen. He said, furniture was in a different place, bottles were smashed, plates were smashed on the floor. Cher has openly admitted that she's a believer in ghosts and also says that she loves them. She believes she's in contact with the spirit of her late husband Sonny, who died in 1998 from a tragic skiing accident. She said, I actually think that Sonny makes a light go on. I have a beautiful chandelier that he makes the light go on when it is impossible, there is no power on. I love ghosts, I prefer ghosts to some people. So, what is going on here? Are these celebrities seeing real apparitions or is it all in their minds? Are they having conversations with themselves and there's nothing more to it? According to a recent survey, 41% of Americans believe in ghosts. One out of five claims to have had a personal encounter with a ghost. Are there such things as ghosts? The answer to this question depends on what precisely is meant by the term ghosts. If the term means spirit beings, the answer is a qualified yes. If the term means spirits of people who have died, the answer is no. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that there are spirit beings, both good and evil. But the Bible negates the idea that the spirits of deceased human beings can remain on earth and haunt the living. So, if ghosts aren't deceased people, then who or what are they? What are they doing? Why are they haunting people or houses? This video will explore these questions give some good answers. The Bible teaches very clearly that there are indeed spirit beings who can connect with and appear in our physical world. The Bible identifies these beings as angels and demons. Angels are spirit beings who are faithful in serving God. Angels are righteous, good, and holy. Demons are fallen angels, angels who rebelled against God. Demons are evil, deceptive, and destructive. According to 2 Corinthians 11:14 through 15, demons masquerade as angels of light and as servants of righteousness. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Just as Satan can transform himself into an angel of light, so demons have the ability to change their shape and appear as a ghost and impersonate a deceased human. This includes mimicking the exact voice and recalling the memories of the dead, knowing information that only the dead person knew. In the Bible, it states that the dead cannot visit the living. There are a few special exceptions to this that we'll discuss in a bit, but generally the dead, whether they go to heaven or hell, cannot appear as ghosts to the living. As the cloud fades and vanishes, so he who goes down to Sheol does not come up. He returns no more to his house, nor does his place know him any more. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun.
Here are the two exceptions for the dead visiting the living that are mentioned in the Bible. In both cases the dead were part of God's kingdom. The first was a special miracle on the day of the Lord Jesus' crucifixion. Some of the redeemed got their resurrection bodies early and then visited people they knew. This could hardly be considered a ghost-like appearance, because a resurrection body appears solid like our own bodies. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. The second example was when King Saul went the witch at Endor. God made a special exception this one time for a special purpose. However, the exception does not make the rule. And this means that generally the dead cannot visit the living and all ghosts are actually demons appearing as the deceased. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? He said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a god coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What is his appearance? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground, and paid homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me, and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. Therefore I have summoned you to tell me what I shall do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you, and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand, and given it to your neighbor David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek, therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell at once full length on the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you, all who were leaders of the earth. It raises from their thrones all who were kings of the nations. All of them will answer and say to you, You too have become as weak as we. You have become like us. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol the sound of your harps. Maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and worms are your covers. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn! How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low! You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Above the stars of God I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a desert and overthrew its cities, who did not let his prisoners go home? Why are demons imitating the dead? Well, there are many obvious reasons. Imagine you contact your dead Uncle Joe to see how he is doing. The demon who appears and sounds just like old Uncle Joe says that everything is fine on the other side. He is doing well and misses you. He even gives you personal information that you thought only Uncle Joe and you knew. You'll think he made it to a nice heavenly place. However, you remember that old Uncle Joe used to love chasing women with a liquor bottle in his back pocket, all the while lying to his wife about it, neglecting his kids, hating his neighbor and gambling all the time. 
As you ponder this, you believe that you can sin without remorse or without following Jesus, because, hey, Uncle Joe was a worse sinner than you were and he made it to heaven. But did he really? In reality, Uncle Joe is in a rocky underground cavern that feels like an oven, with absolutely no water and the stench is beyond imagining. He is tormented by demons and knows this is just a waiting place and that his eternal future is the lake of fire. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. And people will come from east and west, and from north and south, and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last.